Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Fighters of the Pacific, and is from Capsicum Games and Don't Panic Games. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page to find out more information than I could possibly tell you here. To do that, all you got to do is follow the link in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Go there, find out more information than I could possibly tell you here, and hopefully consider backing the project. Now Fighters of the Pacific is a historical war game where you and the other players or you and the other player take control of either the United States or Japan in the Pacific Theater in 1942 uh, World War II. Uh, and how you're actually going to be fighting each other, of course, is via fighter planes and aircraft carriers and other ships that support those planes. Uh, it is a hex-based game. You'll be moving around your planes with hex movement, very specific hex movement, and attacking the other players, trying to, uh, in preset scenarios that are supposed that are you know historically relevant to the battle, and you're going to be trying to rack up points by destroying enemy units, but also going after specific enemy targets according to the scenario uh, within a certain time limit for each battle. It is, of course, a little bit more complicated than that. So let's go ahead and take a brief look at how the game is played with a prototype copy of the game. So do bear in mind that what you see here may change in the final version, which is why you need to go to the Kickstarter page to find out more information. But then in any event, we will come back and discuss it further. Fighters of the Pacific is a two-player historical World War II game for two players. The game takes place in 1942 in the Pacific Theater, with each player controlling the aircraft and carrier forces of either the United States or Japan. You'll set up the board and the position of the pieces representing both players' forces according to preset scenarios, but ultimately you'll be trying to gain victory points by destroying enemy units. Whoever has the most points when the scenario ends will be the winner of the game. Before beginning the game, you must choose one of the scenarios, and it's recommended to go through them in order. The scenario will tell you how to place the boards that constitute the map, where to place aircraft and ships, if applicable, and what each player's priority targets are, as well as how many points they get for certain actions or destroyed units. Each side has three types of planes with various speeds, special abilities, and targeting parameters, and you'll have a reference sheet to remind yourself of these details. Aircraft are the primary units you'll be moving and attacking with, with each piece being double-sided. An aircraft on its ocean side is at low altitude, while an aircraft on its cloudy side is at high altitude. Multiple aircraft from the same player, at the same altitude, and sharing at least one hex with each other to form a continuous hole is considered an aircraft group. Even one plane is considered a group for this purpose. Ships, on the other hand, use anti-aircraft artillery while in the ocean and must be targeted hex by hex with bombs or torpedoes in order to be destroyed. This is often a priority mission objective for one or both sides. Near the board, you'll place a chart with a token representing initiative. At the beginning of the game, the scenario will tell you who gets first initiative, but this will change every turn of the game. There is also a turn tracker, not only to keep track of how long the game has gone on and how much time is left, but also to keep track of when reinforcements arrive for each side of the conflict. Every turn of the game is broken down into three phases. The first is the initiative phase. As mentioned before, the starting turn initiative is determined by the scenario, but future turns are determined by what are called handicap points. You get points for the number of aircraft you have on the battlefield, and more points if they're at low altitude and are damaged. Whoever has fewer points gets to take the initiative and the token is flipped to their side. The second phase is activation, where all the action happens. Starting with whoever has the initiative, players alternate activating aircraft groups or artillery. When activated and resolved, an activation token is placed on that unit to remind you of this. Every aircraft has a speed value which determines how many movement points it has to spend. Planes can move forward one hex, slide right or left, dive to low altitude, climb to high altitude, or turn to a new direction. But all these moves cost movement points. If, at the end of its movement, an aircraft has an enemy unit in its firing range and at the same altitude as determined by type of unit, it will attack automatically. If that enemy hasn't activated yet, they must dodge and move to new space. But if they did already activate, they must take a hit token. If the number of hits ever equals the plane's armor value, that plane is destroyed and the enemy claims it for points. An enemy being attacked can retaliate if your plane is also in their firing range. 
Anti-aircraft defenses also have their own firing range and will attack if possible, but they remain stationary on the ships, or islands. Remember as well that some planes have access to bombs, dive bombs, and torpedoes to make attacking ships easier. When all units have activated, the end of turn phase begins. Ships and torpedoes will now move, activation tokens are removed, reinforcements may be placed depending on the turn number, and the players check to see if the end game conditions have been met. Otherwise, advance the turn marker and proceed to the next turn. As players destroy enemy units, they will keep track of them on their victory point mat. The game ends either during a preset time period or when all enemy units are destroyed. Add up your points according to whatever the scenario's rules are for points, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game. That is Fighters of the Pacific. Well, Fighters of the Pacific has potentially two strengths to it. One is that despite the fact that it is a war game, it is a lot more accessible than a lot of other war games. To be clear, and I didn't you know, quite have time to go over every single detail in the preview section there, but to be clear, there are very specific rules for how both the aircraft and the ships and aircraft carriers move, and they're very precise, and they are meant to be realistic. So they're, within that, you know, that part of the game, you have to be very conscious of the rules and how they uh, work, and that can be a little bit complicated. But really, once you have that down, the game is very straightforward. And I think that even someone who is either a casual gamer or a younger gamer can easily understand what is happening. And then because the movement, while I would say intricate perhaps, is also realistic, that makes it easier to actually glom onto it and understand how it works and you know the ebb and flow of battle and how you need to move your ships. And it's like, after a couple of turns, you're like, oh, okay, if I want to target this unit, I have to begin moving this way now, get them in my firing range and so on. And then then once you have that down, you can start thinking about, well, how now how do I use my plane's special abilities, so to speak, such as you know if I'm a dive bomber, if I have the movement to uh, do um, very uh, dangerous maneuvers, like splitting maneuvers and things like that. Uh, so then, you know, so, and, and the game does ease you into that with its scenarios where every, and that's why I said during the preview section, it's recommended to do them in order because every scenario amps up that difficulty, adds more types of units with new special rules and things like that, special rules on how they move and attack. Uh, so the number one strength would be that it is accessible to gamers who wouldn't normally be able to play a war game or, or I shouldn't say wouldn't be able to, but wouldn't think that they would want to because of how complicated some of them can be. Um, this one has some of that intricacy, but is more accessible. And so it has a broader appeal in that regard. Um, and then I would say that the other strength is just its theme, it's, which is that, you know, it's a war game, but also it's one that takes place during a section of the war that is, you know, high stakes action all the time. Now, of course, it is war and should be taken seriously. But if you're going to have a war game, then having it set on one of the most exciting and, you know, uh, like just danger fuel. Like if you think about it too much, it is really something that they're in these tin cans flying around over this broad ocean with none of the type of like rescue tech that we have nowadays so like the stakes are very high and if you let yourself get immersed into that theme and think about it above and beyond just you know chits and tokens on a board then you can really get into it a lot more i think than if it was you know just another ground war game not to take away from those types of games but this is you know something a little more visceral which is why there are so many movies that do so well that are also set in the pacific theater so there's that as well which again ties back into sort of a potentially broader appeal and you know this is a prototype copy of the game but even that had high quality components so you can imagine what the final version would look like as well um, and there's just a lot of potential and already planned expansions and things like that too in order to add more types of units to the game and so on and so forth so but again you can amp yourself up into and, and progress into those things in order to keep the game more accessible to start and maybe get complicated more complicated as time goes on 
So if you're any of those people that I mentioned who you think that this might appeal to you, if you're into war games, if you want an accessible war game for people, if you like this particular section of World War II and history and how exciting it is and how it's you know all handled with the uh, correct seriousness and respect that such a war deserves while also keeping the game fun, because that is, of course, the goal. If that sounds like that appeals to you or someone you know, hey, you don't have to take my word for any of this. You can go to the Kickstarter page and find out more information than I could possibly tell you here. Again, you can do that by following the link in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. That is Fighters of the Pacific from Capsicum Games and Don't Panic Games. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, for supporting our sponsors. Take care.